And uh, we look forward to celebrating the freedoms that we have with, in the Lord Jesus Christ. And certainly on this Independence Day weekend, uh, we celebrate the freedoms that we have here in this country. Amen. And uh, let's be grateful for that. Let's stand together, if we would. Uh, our brother Ray is going to uh, sing for us the Star Spangled Banner. You're more than welcome to join in and uh, along with him as well. But let's continue as we would worship the Lord together this morning. Oh, say can you see like a dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars country, the United States, even though uh, oftentimes we struggle uh, with the things that are going on in this land, we're grateful that you are still a God who's in control. And so, Father, today we thank you uh, on this Independence Day weekend uh, for the freedoms that we have, not only in this country, but certainly in Jesus Christ. And Father, I pray that as we continue to worship you today, that you be honored and glorified in all that we do. We'll give you the thanks and praise for it in Jesus' matchless name. Amen. Okay, last week we celebrated the resurrection, and so this week we're going to teach you a newer version of the old hymn at Calvary. So, a uh, song by Casting Crowns, um, the version that they do of the old hymn. So, I mean, if you please stay seated and sing along if you know it, or as you learn it, join us as we sing it out this morning. Years I spent in vanity and pride. Caring not my Lord was crucified Knowing not it was for me he died on Calvary By God's word at last my sin I learned Then I trembled at the Lord's burn Till my guilty soul and glory turned to Calvary There your mercy and your grace was free There your pardon multiplied to me There my burden so found liberty At Calvary Now I've given Jesus everything Oh, three. 
Sometimes right now it's probably a little bit difficult at times uh, for us to really, really like everything that's going on uh, in the United States. Uh, we look around us and even as we would celebrate Independence Day, uh, we see a lot of things that we really don't like as Christians. Amen? Uh, and even as citizens of this great land, we see those types of things. Because there are those that would try to convince us that it's proper or it's proper freedom, if you would, to be able to disparage this land, to be able to destroy the things that we hold dear. Uh, but as a Christian, we know that true freedom comes through the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, we're here to celebrate that freedom today and to uh, enjoy that, that together. You know, no country uh, has been intertwined, if you would, with as much religious background and religious freedom as what we have here in the United States of America. Um, we have the opportunity to worship God freely today, even with a few restrictions, uh, such as the mask and a few other things that, that may come along. We still have the freedom to be able to worship God as we do. Amen. And uh, we ought to be grateful for that. Our brothers and sisters right now in China are sitting in prison. Some are being beaten. Some are being killed because of their faith and their belief in the word of God. And they stand true to what God has called them to do. And so we praise God for that. And, you know, even though it's sad that officials are trying to convince us that uh, we are not a nation based on Christian principles, we know historically and we know even now biblically that God is still in control and that God is indeed uh, who brought these folks uh, to this land. And, and now we celebrate that freedom together in the Lord Jesus Christ. So today as we think about that, I'd like to ask you this question, first of all. And uh, maybe perhaps not really necessary that you would answer it out loud, but think about to yourself, what does freedom really look like to you? If somebody asks you, what is freedom all about? What is it that really comes to your mind? Maybe it's, well, you know what? I, freedom, real true freedom would be able to be sit on my front porch and sit in my rocking chair with a glass of iced tea in one hand and, and watching all my grandkids and children run around in the yard. No cares at all. Nobody ever gets sick. Uh, we just all enjoy life tremendously. When the fireworks go off, our dogs don't get all excited. They don't run and hide underneath the bed. Uh, you know, we just, we just have a peaceful life. And for some, that's what freedom would really be all about. Uh, then there might be those that uh, say, well, let me put a little spiritual twist on it. You know, uh, real freedom is, yes, being able to come to church. Real freedom is being able to read the Bible. You know, one of the things that I was reading this past week that just really... Uh, struck a nerve with me was how often these pastors uh, and uh, believers who are sitting in prisons in China will have somebody come to visit them and they will somehow slip a tiny little piece of paper that has a scripture passage on it. And the prisoners will take that passage of scripture, they'll read it off of the paper, they'll commit it to memory, and then they eat the piece of paper so that it can't be found. You don't have to do that, do you? Every one of you that's sitting there in this pew today can reach right in front of you if you don't have your own copy of the Bible, and you can pick up a copy of the Bible and you can read it. And we see that type of freedom, if you would, eroding even more and more today. But we have a freedom to believe what we want to believe, don't we? You can choose to believe in Jesus Christ, or you don't have to. That's your freedom. You can believe what you want to believe. And that's one of the, the freedoms that we have, not only in Jesus Christ, but certainly uh, even in this land. And I, I read an illustration uh, about this idea of being able to believe what you want to believe that I thought I'd share with you before we have prayer this morning. Uh, it's, a, it's a true uh, story about a biology teacher in New York. I guess that might not surprise some of you. Uh, but she was teaching biology to her sixth grade class. And she simply said to them, how many of you boys and girls are evolutionists? And so the children, wanting to be on the right side with their teacher, all of them raised their hands, but little Johnny. And after it was all done, the teacher looked around and she said to Johnny, she said, well, Johnny, aren't you an evolutionist? And he said, no. She said, well, what are you? He said, well, I'm a creationist. And she said, well, 
how do you know you're a creationist? Or how do you believe that you're a creationist? And he just simply said, well, mom's a creationist, and dad's a creationist, so I'm a creationist. And the teacher didn't quite know what to say, and her words kind of got away from her a little bit. And she said, well, let me ask you this, Johnny. If your mom was a moron, and your dad was an idiot, what would that make you? And Johnny said, well, that would make me an evolutionist. You know, you can believe what you want. You have that opportunity. You have that freedom. We as Christians choose to believe the truth of the Word of God. And we not only celebrate God's Word to us, we want it to be wholeheartedly what we believe in Jesus Christ. Father God, I pray that as we examine our freedom, because freedom is ours, that as we examine your Word today, that we would be encouraged as we see the freedom that we have in Jesus Christ as Christians. And Father, I pray for everyone that's here today and those that may be listening online, that Father, we would celebrate the freedom that we have in Jesus Christ. Help us to be excited. Yes, because even in spite of all of the difficulties we have here in this nation, even today, that Father, we would be able to walk away from here walk away from looking at your word and celebrate the freedom that we have in Jesus Christ. Might it encourage our hearts today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Take your Bibles, if you would, and turn with me to the Gospel of John this morning. Chapter 8. John chapter 8. thing that I think that we need to concentrate and look at this morning through the Word of God uh, begins here in the Gospel of John chapter 8 because our true freedom, my friends, our freedom is in the truth. And the truth is this. Jesus Christ has freed you from the power of sin in your life. Jesus Christ has freed you and I from the power of sin in our life. And here in the Gospel of John, chapter 8, we would see the words of the Lord Jesus Christ primarily in this passage, beginning in verse 31. And if you would follow along as I would read these verses this morning. John chapter 8, beginning in verse 31. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, catch that, okay, those Jews who believed in Christ, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you what? Free. Free. They answered him, well, we're Abraham's descendants. We've never been in bondage to anyone. So how can you say you will be made free? Jesus answered them, most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be what? Free indeed. You know, in Jesus' day, keep in mind that the, the political freedom was only something they dreamed about. And so when the Lord Jesus Christ came riding into Jerusalem on the, on the donkey, as he rode into that city, they were thinking that somehow they had this new deliverer, this new king. They had somebody who was going to deliver them from the tyranny of the government rule at that time. And so in their mind, they're thinking about that type of understanding of freedom. But real freedom is found in Jesus Christ. And it's for certain our freedoms are not found in the corrupt government that we have, even in this blessed United States of America. <coughs> Our true freedom is in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? And so if we put our focus and our understanding on that this morning, it will help us to celebrate even in the midst of all of the difficulties that we may find ourselves in. How is this freedom in Christ found? Look here in this passage in John chapter 8, if you would. Notice verse 32. Notice what Jesus says. He says, you shall know. That word know here is the idea of experience. You as a Christian, he says, you will experience the truth, and the truth will make you free. If you go back just a couple of chapters to the Gospel of John, chapter 1, let's be reminded of what happens and what happened with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ here on this earth. In verse 14, we read, And the Word, speaking about God, became flesh. 
Jesus Christ, and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Look at verse 17. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through whom? Through Jesus Christ. And so we understand that the truth and, and the words of God himself help us to understand the freedom that we have in Jesus Christ. He says again here in John chapter 8 that that truth, the understanding of Jesus Christ and what he has done for you, the words of God himself give us an understanding about the freedom that we have in Jesus Christ. Now notice the question though in verse 33. Because notice it's even Christ's followers. They said, well, what are we in bondage to? What are we in bondage to? And notice Jesus' answer down in verse 34. Jesus very simply says, I'm telling you that you are in bondage as a slave of sin. He says you are in bondage, but the good news is, verse 36, Jesus Christ makes you what? Free from the power of sin. Amen? You need to be excited about that. That Jesus Christ says, you are free from being a slave to sin. Other passages of scripture, I want you to turn to one, Romans chapter 6, and I'll wait till you get there because you, you have to see this for yourself. Romans chapter 6, we have an understanding here of this idea of being dead to sin. What, what is this idea of being dead to sin? In Romans chapter 6, if you would, go down to verse 4. Romans chapter 6, verse 4. And understand, grasp this, Christian, okay? Be excited about this, understand it. Beginning in verse 4, Paul says this, Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, speaking of Christ, that just as Christ was raised from the dead, which we celebrated last week, by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in what? Newness of life. For we, if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, if we have been united together with Christ in his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, and that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been Freed from sin. There's our word again, the idea of freedom from sin. So let me remind you, what happens when you believe in Jesus Christ? What happens when you believe in what Christ did? Once you have been immersed into the death of Christ, you no longer in the position of living in sin. It's no longer a bondage over you. No longer does it have that control. You're not under the control of sin anymore, amen? But what happens to the believer? How often do we find ourselves, even as Christians, that the rule and the reign of sin just kind of comes back and takes over? Jesus Christ reminds us that this rule or these habits of sin, the desire of sin in your heart and in my heart as a Christian is no longer there. Sin no longer has the power over you. No longer does sin have to be something that controls you. You are free from sin. So celebrate it. You celebrated with fireworks, a lot of you, last night. You watched the fireworks and, ooh, and you awed and you celebrated all of that. Can I tell you that as a Christian, you need to be celebrating the fact that you no longer have to be under the control of sin. It doesn't have to control your life. Jesus Christ has freed you from that. You are free from the, the rule of that in your life. You're free from the guilt. We no longer live in sin. It is no longer what penalizes us or holds it. That's your position in Christ. Once you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are no longer in bondage to sin. That's a position. You are put into that place. Because of Jesus Christ's death on the cross and then his glorious resurrection. Now, having said that, how many of us in this room can say that we live without sin? For those of you that might be watching, not a single hand went up. Not even mine. Listen, we, we can't live without sin. We will never be perfect, 
in this life until we are in the presence of the only true holy God. And when that takes place, we are fully sanctified in Jesus Christ. We are totally free from sin. But as a Christian, we do not practice. We're not to be practicing sin in our lives. It doesn't have control anymore because of Jesus Christ's presence. We've been gloriously free from that. Maybe you're there, though, and you're saying, you know what, Pastor, I, I, I believe that. I believe that I'm free from sin. But you know what? I find myself giving into the temptation of sin too much. Or I find myself giving into the temptation of sin every once in a while. You say, well, how, how do I control that? Can I remind you of what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13? If you're not familiar with it, I'd encourage you to look at it. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, the Apostle Paul is talking about this control of sin. This presence of sin in our lives. And here's what he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. He very simply says this. There is no temptation. Notice that word. No temptation has overtaken you. Except as what is common to man. But God is faithful. Who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able but will that with the temptation also make a way of escape so that you can put up with, if you would, that sin temptation. So is the temptation of sin ever going to disappear, folks? No. But Jesus Christ, because of your presence in Him, gives you the ability to put up or to stand against the sin that comes your way. I heard an illustration actually this past week, by a pastor by the name of Greg Locke. And as I listened to this illustration, I was, was almost, uh, I, I could not believe how closely tied to what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, and the fact that we can be free from sin and from the temptations in our life. In the illustration, I'll, I'll just paraphrase it a little bit, it goes something along those lines. There was a farmer who had a hundred acres of land. And he decided, because one of his neighbors kept bothering him, if you would, and he said, I want to buy it, I want to buy it, I want to buy it. And so the farmer finally said, listen, I will sell you that 100 acres, but in actuality, I'm only going to sell you 99. And I will give you a price that you cannot refuse. And the farmer said, well, why 99? He said, because there's one acre right in the middle of that land that I just really love. It's a place of solitude for me. It's a place that I really enjoy. And so I will sell you that 99 acres for almost nothing as long as I can still own that one acre of land right in the middle of that property. So he handed a piece of paper to the farmer and the price was so ridiculously low. He said, you gotta be kidding me. You're gonna sell me that? And he said, yes, as long as you agree that I can have that one acre of land right in the middle. So the farmer quickly signed his pen and they exchanged the monies and the land was transferred. And it wasn't too long before the new farmer, the new owner, started to grow his crops and everything was going great. But then little by little, he started to notice that when this other farmer wanted to get to the middle of his property, he had to ride through and destroy and put mud ruts in all kinds of problems to get to that middle acre. And so after a while it became a nuisance because now as that farmer would come to celebrate his solitude in the middle of all of that property, there was torn down crops, there was mud ruts all over the place, and finally it got to the place where the original owner was really, really disappointed in what was happening. And Pastor Locke, went on to make this illustration, and I think it's very good. He said, you know what, that's like a lot of us as Christians. We'll say, you know what, I no longer live in sin because of Jesus Christ. And I read my Bible, and I go to church, I don't look at pornography on the television, I don't do this, I don't do that, I tithe to the church, I do everything. But there's that one thing, that one temptation 
that one sin that I just won't let go of. And if you really think about it, that's what the enemy does. And as long as you hold on to that one thing right in the middle of your life, the enemy, Satan, trounces everything else that you're trying to do to live for Jesus Christ to get to that one sin that's in the middle of your life. And you think nothing's going wrong, and yet your life is being destroyed, and you're not having the blessings of God in your life. You're not having the total freedom that you have in Jesus Christ because the enemy is trouncing all over those good things that you're doing, all of those right things that you're doing to get to that one little acre, that one little place of temptation of sin right in the middle of your life. And until we as Christians realize the blessing that we have in the freedom of Jesus Christ, we no longer live in sin. And until we finally realize that God wants 100% control of our hearts and of our lives, the enemy will continue to trounce everything that you else that you do for the Lord Jesus Christ. That's not an easy thing sometimes for us to hear. Because we all like to hold on. It seems like we like to hold on to that one area in our lives. You know what, friends? Jesus Christ says you are gloriously free from the condemnation of sin because of Jesus Christ's work on the cross. Freedom in Christ is yours. Amen? So celebrate it. But don't live your life as a Christian and allow the sin or that one area in your life to destroy your spiritual walk with Jesus Christ. And it will. It will. Because as it erodes a little bit at a time, eventually that path gets bigger and bigger and bigger. My grandson likes to ride the four-wheeler. And when he first started riding the four-wheeler, it was back in April when we had lots of those showers. You remember? We haven't had any for about a week now. And the ground, as you went back into the area where he would ride in the woods right behind our house, was very, very muddy. And it didn't take very long until he had dug deep, deep ruts into the mud. And so one day, his grandfather decided that he would take the four-wheeler back there. And you know what I found? I couldn't stay out of those ruts. No matter how I tried, the four-wheeler kept getting pulled into those ruts. Think about that, folks. You know, the enemy wants to destroy your life as a Christian. But you have freedom in Jesus Christ from sin, so do not allow the power of sin to come back and take control of even one area of your life. You won't live perfect, amen? You won't live perfectly. But Jesus Christ can have control. I want to show you something that's very important, if you would. What's my responsibility then as a child of God? Would you go over to Colossians chapter 3? Colossians chapter 3. There's a passage here. It takes uh, actually the first 17 verses. We're not going to read all of these verses because you're familiar with them. And I want you to take some time this week to do a little bit of an inventory uh, in your life, an inventory in my life. Uh, with Jesus Christ, as, as Paul talks about it here in Colossians chapter 3. He's talking about what has taken place since you now believe in Jesus Christ. He says right there in verse 1, If you then were raised with Christ, so you're dead to sin, you're gloriously raised because of the resurrection of Christ. If you then were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. Have that desire to want to live as Jesus Christ has lived. Notice verse 2. How do you do that? You begin by setting your mind on things where? Above, not on things on the earth. Then verse 5. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth. And then he lists some of them. Fornication, uncleanness, passion, desires, covetousness, and so on. You could add to that list based on readings of Paul's elsewhere in the scriptures. But I want you to notice that very first line. It says, therefore, put to death. The idea there is that you are intentional about putting that one sin or that area in your life where Jesus Christ does not have total control. He says you are intentional about putting that to death. You're doing everything you can humanly through G and through Jesus Christ to put that one area to breast, to kill it, if you would, to be dead to that one area in your life. 
Notice what he says in verse 8. Now you yourselves put off these things. Do you struggle with anger? Do you struggle with wrath or malice? Filthy language he goes on. Lying, don't lie to one another. Why? Because you put off the old deeds. You've gotten rid of those things. And in verse 10 he says, you've now put on a new man. We mentioned 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 many, many times. You know the verse, don't you? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is what? A new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Notice here in verse 10 in Colossians 3, he says, You put on that new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. How do you do it? Verses 16 and 17. Notice what the command of Paul is here. Through the Holy Spirit, he says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another. Do it in psalms. Do it in hymns. Do it in spiritual psalms. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. That one area of your life. Think about it. Ask yourself this question. If every time you see that you're being drawn to that one thing in the middle of that acreage, that one thing in the middle of your life, you begin to dwell on the Word of God. You begin to focus on hymns. You begin to focus on spiritual things. As you do that, my friend, Jesus Christ will give you total victory over that area of sin in your life. It's guaranteed through Jesus Christ. But you can't just sit back in your rocking chair somewhere and, or go to work every day and not be intentional about living for Jesus Christ. We have to be those that are understanding the freedom that we have in Jesus Christ, the position of freedom from sin, and now God wants me to live the way that he has called me to. And it's not a cakewalk. I'd remind you what Paul says in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. He says very simply, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but who lives within me? Christ lives in me. And I live that in the flesh, and I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So that every day, when I think about the freedom that I have, not only in this nation on Independence Day, but even more importantly, the freedom that I have in Jesus Christ, that I am free from the control of sin, I understand it's through the faith and the understanding of what Jesus Christ has done, and I don't do it on my own. I live through Him, and my life has changed for the glory of God. And as a child of God, I understand His grace a little bit more. I'm going to close by asking you to look, if you would, at a passage in Romans, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. And an understanding of, of this grace of God and, and this freedom that I have from the, from the sin that might be in my life. And in Romans chapter 8, beginning in verse 8, here's what Paul says. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You're in the spirit, child of God. And if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he's not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead also will give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. Here's the question. Here's the question for all of us. Do you believe in the death of the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen? Do you believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Do you believe that Jesus Christ has made a difference and you believed on him? If that's the case, Paul says, then I will give you, I have given you life to your mortal body. I've given you eternal life. I've given you the ability to be free from sin, every aspect in your life. So, child of God, understand that freedom is something that Jesus Christ has already given us. Celebrate the freedom of Jesus Christ. Celebrate with fireworks. Celebrate with shouting. 
Celebrate what Jesus Christ has done for you and fully celebrate the freedom that you have in him. Celebrate what Jesus Christ has done for you. Don't allow sin to reign even in that little middle part or that little acreage in your life. Don't allow sin to have any power over your life. And child of God, as we think about the presence of Jesus Christ, it'll make a difference in our lives. So I'd encourage you, I'd encourage you to celebrate the freedom that you have in Christ. Celebrate the freedoms that we have not only in this land, on this Independence Day weekend, but even more importantly, the freedoms that I have in Jesus Christ. And let's give Him the glory, amen? Let's celebrate it. So when you walk out of here and you have your mask on, and nobody can see the smile on your face, let them know, hey, I'm celebrating my freedom in Jesus Christ. Let them know. I don't know how many times this past week, um, as I was at a store or whatever, I had my mask on, and I found myself, somebody would say something, I'd smile, and then I'd realize they can't see that at all. And you have to kind of give them some words to let them know that you appreciated what they have to say. Listen, friends, celebrate what Jesus Christ has done for you. Celebrate your life in Jesus Christ. Give Him the glory. Amen? Amen. As we go from God's house today, let's give Him thanks. And let's celebrate the freedom that we have in Jesus Christ. We are free from the bondage of sin. Hallelujah! It does not have to reign in my life. And might we as God's children continue to give Him the glory for that. Why don't we stand together this morning and as we would close our service together, uh, let's sing the doxology and give praise to God even as we would leave from here. And then be called to a ministry to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. If there's one of you here today who has not believed on Jesus Christ, the scriptures say very simply, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Amen. And we want to share that with Jesus Christ. Now, how better can you do that by being able to talk to somebody, and you guys, I look around, I see all these USA and freedoms and flag shirts and so on and so forth, to say, you know what, I celebrate Independence Day. Do you know what I celebrate even more? God has saved me gloriously, and I'm free from sin. And you tell them about Jesus Christ, and you let him be the one that changes their lives. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Pastor Barry, would you lead us in prayer, closing prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of fellowship in your word. I pray, God, that we would be uh, faithful hearers of the word and doers of the word as well, as James says. We pray, God, that uh, we would uh, crucify the flesh, Lord God, and that we would uh, have mastery over sin through the influence of your Holy Spirit. We pray, God, that we would have victory over the things that so easily entangle us and that we would live a life righteous for you, Lord, and that we would not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of our mind through your holy word, we pray. And we pray, God, you continue to build us up as a church, help us to impact this community for Jesus Christ. And we thank you today for the free country that we live in, and we thank God uh, for allowing us to live in this amazing land. And it's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. 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 The Lord bless you to go from his house. Celebrate your freedom. Amen.